Final Fantasy XI, the classic MMORPG, still kicking and just celebrated their 20th anniversary and now Final Fantasy XI is preparing their summer update called Summer's Delight Campaign. It goes live on July 12th, 2022 and will continue with fresh content for Final Fantasy XI players. Let's break down all the things in the update that is incoming. Now the Summer's Delight Campaign runs from July 12th to July 31st for Final Fantasy XI so you get half a month and includes chain experience bonus, which means double to triple the normal amount of experience during this time. This gives you a chance to catch up on levels or level an alt job very quickly. And as any Final Fantasy XI player knows, that chain experience is highly addictive. It also includes chain capacity point bonuses, where experience chains will yield double to triple the normal amount of capacity points during the campaign. Also, chain monstrosity bonuses with double to triple the normal amount. There will also be increased seal and crest drop rates, which is based on the number of members in the party, so up to a maximum of six seals, because you can have six people in the party. And additional seal battlefield spoils, which means that vanquishing specific monsters in the battlefields will reward you with a variety of items, and this includes material to craft, plus two Empyrean equipment, Mog Bonanza coupons, Dynamis currency, and Synthesis materials. And Shimo in Juno, at H8 I think, will exchange the seals and crests at double the rate. Now, for the Assault Nizul Isle Uncharted Area Survey, adventurers now have a chance to acquire new mysterious items whenever defeating a notorious monster on each floor during the duration of this campaign. Also, the bonus Belled Campaign. For the duration of the campaign, Lair Colonization and Wildskeeper Reeves will offer evaluation bonuses throughout their duration, approximately doubling Belled and Experience Gains. And it does also note here the maximum amount of build and experience obtainable from a single revive remains unchanged. Also, double the drop rate for the, pardon my pronunciation here, Semulacra segments in colonization and layer reeves will be doubled for the duration of the campaign. Also, Wildskeeper Reeve campaign. The Wildskeeper Reeves are going to undergo these changes. The required fame and build cost of the key item required to participate will be reduced. Enemies will drop two pinches of high purity build. Enemies will also drop mog coupons. The respawn times for the following notorious monsters will be reduced. Kolkab, Chaka, Achuka, Yunkax, Hurkan, and Kumhao. Also, the Alter Ego Expo. So, Alter Egos will receive the following improvements for duration of the campaign. Alter Egos maximum HP and MP will be increased by 50%. Alter Egos will have stronger resistance to status ailments as well. Now, the Vagary campaign. The rate at which etching items drop from enemies has been increased. Additionally, exchanging the following key items at the Odyssean Passage and Lethalia will yield two additional rewards. Fabricated Ward of Biting Winds, Fabricated Ward of Miasma, Fabricated Ward of Impurity, Fabricated Ward of Ashen Wings, and Fabricated Ward of the False King. Also, Skirmish Frenzy Campaign. Skirmishes will undergo the following changes. Personal Treasure Copper ranks will increase. The spawn rate of Yekus will be increased at Alluvian Skirmishes. The spawn rate of Balamore's Adumbration will be increased in Skirmish. Vials of Translory will always be obtainable in Skirmish. Vials of Transmelange are more likely to be obtained in Skirmish. And the spawn rate of Heart Wings will be increased in Skirmishes. Also, the Dark Matter Arcane Glyptics Campaign for the duration of the campaign. Equipment from Raisin Jima can be engraved with Arcane Glyptics up to six times at no additional charge, with the equipment receiving the same benefits as if they were engraved with Dark Matter. And Special Dial Campaign. For the duration of this campaign, players will receive a SP dial key each day upon login. This key can be traded to the NPC at the Gobby Mystery Box to spin the special dial. Now they do note here no, no daily tally will be expended upon spinning the special dial and only characters for whom 45 days or more has passed since character creation are eligible to use the Gobby Mystery Box. Also monster rearing campaign so reared creatures will be twice as likely to transform the duration of this campaign and macrocosmic orb campaign. For the duration of the campaign campaign vanquishing certain monsters in the following battlefields will occasionally reward players with job cards and a variety of other items and that's the Sacrificial Chamber, Throne Room, Cubia Arena, Chamber of Oracles, Horlaeus Peak, Wall Room Shrine, and Balga's Dais. Also the Omen job card campaign. So Omen will receive the following adjustment for the duration of the campaign. It'll be easier to obtain job cards upon clearing all the additional objectives. It will be easier to obtain job cards when defeating lesser monsters along specific routes. 
Omen Light Double Up Campaign. So Omen will receive the following adjustments for the duration of the campaign. Two Omen Lights will be activated when vanquishing monsters. If the first light is a good one, the second will not appear. Dynamis Divergent Statue Crusher Campaign. So for duration of this campaign, players will earn additional rewards when besting statues in Dynamis Divergence. And Ambuscade Gallantry Campaign. So for the duration of the campaign, the number of badges of gallantry earned from normal and intense ambuscades will be doubled once per day. And it does note this bonus stacks with the effects Abdal's Sills and will reset at 8 a.m. Pacific time each day. And that is a lot. So this looks like a very exciting campaign for Final Fantasy XI players. And I love to see these updates just keep to roll for this classic MMO RPG. Real quick before we continue on with the video, I want to give a thank you to the members of Napalm. This channel is completely community sponsored. And these are the brave heroes who have stepped forth to strap on their gear and sharpen their blades and are casting the spells of awesome by becoming members of the channel. With exclusive perks, sneak peeks, and more, thank you for your support. And I think you are interested in supporting the channel. Click join down below for a list of options and add your name to the list of knights and mages on the Council of Napalm. And I want to give a special shout out to the Lords of Napalm, Bounty Code, Jared Woodhouse, Dimelopes, Farthest Reach, Not Sid, Sparrow, Carsony, Christopher Hensel, and Random Rob. Thank you for your highest tier membership. Now on to the video. Do you currently play on live Final Fantasy XI? Are you excited about these changes? What are some you like, some you don't like? Or do you like them all? And is this enough to make people want to return to Final Fantasy XI? What about you? Uh, does it does it tempt you to want to come back and level up that job quicker with the chain experience? Or maybe you were at in-game long ago but haven't played in a while. There has been a lot of updates if you've been gone for a while. They really just started slapping together lots of updates over the past year here and keeping it rolling and I think that's fantastic. Now for the 20th anniversary we all kind of wanted that Final Fantasy 11 classic to be announced or maybe a graphic update announcement or Final Fantasy 11 reborn kind of situation. We didn't really get that but it does look like the support is going to continue for Final Fantasy 11. After all it was just recently surpassed as their most profitable Final Fantasy game by Final Fantasy 14 and it's a very close second. Final Fantasy 11 is still very popular if you wondered especially certain servers are wildly popular and with the invention of trust and being able to go out and do the content that you had to find groups for before does make it much more accessible for more people. Of course you can still bring your buddies and group together and all that kind of thing. The trust just kind of helped fill up the party now to make sure you got enough people to do all the content and do what you wanted to do or always wanted to do but couldn't find a group to do it etc. Now you can play whatever class you want. You can get a trust as a tank or a healer or DPS or whatever you want and go up there and do any content you want which for a game this old you know I wouldn't recommend that on a newer MMO or one that's still at kind of the peak of its concurrent user base. However for a game like Final Fantasy 11 that is getting a little long in the tooth a little older I do completely understand why they would release something like trust or mercenaries as they call it in EverQuest. I get it. It just helps people play the content they want to play when they want to play it or to do things they always wanted to do but never was able to find a group to do it and I think that's a good thing especially for a game of this age but let me know what you think in the comments down below and guys please like and subscribe to the channel really helps me out and I'm really trying to drive the subscriber count higher so if you enjoy Final Fantasy 11 content we do quite a bit of that and MMO RPG news especially I focus on the old school but I do updates for newer MMO RPGs as well and I really hope you'll join us here on the channel it would mean a lot to me and until next time my friends God bless and happy gaming <laughs>